Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geoecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to discuss about human ecological adaptation in monsoon deciduous forest biome. So, why do we call it monsoon deciduous forest biome? We are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So before we go ahead please like and subscribe to the channel the geoecologist and you can also visit our website the geoecologist.com Now let's understand the location and distribution of this particular biome as we say the monsoon deciduous forest biome So normally the tropical deciduous forest biome are found in the regions of monsoon climate that's why it is also known as monsoon climate or monsoon deciduous forests so basically it's the tropics right in which this kind of forest biome exists and monsoon is a particular kind of climate that we know so there are some departures from this close relationship as well and what happens there is some kind of extension as well so what happens near correspondence between the regions of monsoon climate and deciduous forest so there is kind of a intermingling as well so let's understand that there are three major areas of tropical deciduous forest biome which are the monsoon deciduous forest biome as well so the first is called neotropics mainly west indies section right that is the first area in the world then indo malaysian zone that is mainly in the south and southeast asia except equatorial evergreen rainforest that we have segregated in the previous lecture as well so this is specific to those particular indo malaysian zone apart from the equatorial evergreen rainforest now eastern africa and northern australia also has this kind of particular deciduous forest biome which has similar nature to the monsoon deciduous forest biome so what we see here is that besides these major areas as we said some discontinuous localities of tropical or monsoon deciduous forest biomes are also found in south africa southern brazil southeastern usa formosa that is in taiwan and southern china and japan so some patches are also there of same kinds of vegetation because similar kind of moisture condition and temperature condition exist in this particular areas but largely the three major areas of the world as we have defined now let's understand that monsoon forest in context of india if we say in the anamalai hills western ghats tamil nadu that is in indian context these are tropical deciduous in nature that is tropical deciduous forest that grow seasonally that's where the idea is because monsoon is a season so it grows seasonally and it has seasonal wet condition and seasonally dry condition so what happens these forests occur mainly in india myanmar vietnam southern coastal china region eastern brazil as we have seen the distribution smaller areas in southern and central america north of equator west indies as we have seen southern africa and northern australia so that's the repetition of another idea of the distribution if you see in the image now let's go ahead and see how this monsoon forest as we say they are also called dry forest and tropical deciduous forest so any name if you hear anywhere either dry forest or tropical deciduous forest or monsoon forest remember they are talking about the same things so open woodland is there in tropical areas that have long dry season because monsoon is the only season when they have rainfall that's why longer dry spell followed by season of heavy rainfall in particular 3 to 4 months that's the whole characteristic so what happens the trees in a monsoon forest usually shed their leaves shedding of leaves is basically leaving their leaves okay so leaves fall of the trees when during the dry season so they are not evergreen that's why they are shedding their leaves in a particular time period so they come into leaf at the starting of rainy season again so what happens lianas that is the vines we have heard already herbaceous epiphytes like air plants orchids these are the species that are majorly present there monsoon forests are specially well developed in south east asia so remember south east asia that is including india okay has typified tall teak trees and bamboo so remember teak sal and bamboo are three major species which grow in monsoon forests now let's understand the climate of this particular biome 
This tropical deciduous forest biome is characterized by two distinct seasons. Understand here seasonality is the important factor. So it has one moist season and one is dry season. All right. There are three main seasons in a year in India as for majority of the seasonal extent is there. So surrounding monsoonal areas such as Pakistan and Bangladesh, what happens? We have dry warm summer season that is around March to June or July times. Then what happens? Warm humid summer is July to October when there is advent of monsoon. And then what we have is dry winter that is November to February. Okay. Apart from some patches of winter rainfall because of western disturbance, largely it is dry winters. So these are the three major categories of climate pertaining to the tropical deciduous forest biome, that is the monsoon forest biome. Now let's understand that average temperature of warm dry summer, that is somewhere between 27 to 32 degrees C. But the maximum temperature may go up to 48 degrees C even the month of June and May, right? So what happens? Warm humid summer season records average temperature again is 20 to 30. But temperature during dry winter falls down to 10 degrees C even, right? Similarly, the length of dry season is more important. Why? Because the total amount of precipitation in affecting vegetation in the tropical deciduous forest biome is important. So what happens here? Dry season is more important because it is more lengthy. Wet season, that is rainy season, is short duration. So that's why it becomes more important. On an average, the mean annual rainfall, now understand this is talking about annual rainfall and its mean, that is about 1500 millimeters, that is 150 centimeter, okay? But there are areas where there is variation in this, right? In the spatial and temporal distribution. So even the temporal distribution of rainfall within a single area, year is highly variable and dynamic in nature. That's why about 80% of mean annual rainfall is received within three wet months. That is July, August and September in this particular biome. So what happens? The rainy season records surplus of water because there is lots of rainfall in just three months. So there is surplus of water while dry winter areas, dry summer season is completely deficient. Okay. So what happens? Dry season receives less than 25 millimeter rainfall and wet season is 150 and above. So see the drastic difference. There is maximum evaporation during warm dry summer months that results in desiccation of soils and marked reduction in soil water. So this is one of the issues as well that what happens because of too much of heating, there is complete dryness of moisture and even soil desiccation happens. So what is there important is that seasonal regime of annual monsoonal rainfall gives these forests a character and also the shedding of leaves becomes one of the important characteristics of these particular trees here. Now let's understand the particular flora condition. So number of plant species in comparison to the earlier that we studied the tropical evergreen rainforest, it is less here. So it means less species richness in terms of plant is there. Okay, in this particular deciduous forest biome. Since the density of plants is also lower in this biome, the rainforest biome is more in terms of getting the sunlight on the canopy. But here what happens, the sunlight also can penetrate largely to the ground. So there is a difference. In evergreen forest, we have density of plants that is more. Here density is less. So if it is less dense, so sunlight will penetrate to the ground. Now the height of the trees here ranges between 12 meter to 30 meter. So there are four strata or layers. Understand this many times questions are being asked on the vertical stratification of the flora in particular biome. So remember here the strata is into four different layers that we study here. So the uppermost is the largely the trees that we say okay and they also have their maximum apex height that is about 30 meters and they vary in the second strata till 12 meters. So first two strata is the trees itself. The third stratum is formed of shrubs. So smaller plants grow within those trees. Okay. And whereas the last and the fourth one is the ground related herbaceous plants that are very close to the ground. So we have four layering in terms of the vertical structure of this evergreen, sorry, tropical deciduous forests. Now, 
this is the species that i was talking about is sal the shoria robusta and teak trees of indian deciduous forests form the forest canopy that is the first two vertical layer as we have studied and its shape is not like umbrella or cauliflower as in the case of forest canopy of the rainforest biome so there it was like umbrella shape a larger canopy here it is smaller than that it's not like the umbrella shape in other forests that we saw so what is there bamboo is another important member of indian deciduous forests especially besides there are numerous trees climbers shrubs grasses so species richness is there but not as much in comparison to the evergreen forest now let's look at the fauna the animal life so it is significant ecological principle as we have studied in the principles of ecology that what happens more is the development of stratification of vertical structure of vegetation community of a biome greater is the number of plant species and similarly it also affects the total population or species diversity so what do we see here is here it is in comparison to evergreen forest it is less so same way species richness is also lesser than that we saw in the tropical evergreen forest so this ecological principle holds good in the case of tropical evergreen forest that we studied as we know and here there is a variation so there is comparatively lesser number of animal species in the monsoon deciduous forest than the rainforest so why is it so it is because less developed vertical strata and hence less diversification of animal species in evergreen forest what did we see those animals used to live on the branches on the tree canopy but here that kind of richness is not there so in comparison it is less developed vertical strata that determines the species richness in terms of fauna here so in other words the seasonal character of the monsoon deciduous forest has been responsible for seasonal regime in breeding reproduction and also migration remember these three keywords the breeding reproduction and migration of animals is also controlled by the seasonality so it means it has a complete seasonal characteristic that's why it is monsoon deciduous so the animals of this tropical and subtropical dry deciduous biome range from very small microorganisms to large bodied animals like if you see in the image itself elephants horses hippopotamus rhinos lions forest buffaloes all these things are available and also many bird species are there so this biome specific this monsoonal characteristic biome has the largest number of domesticated mammals that's the catch here largest number of domesticated mammals because of agrarian development so here alongside this forest you will find is the agricultural development taking place even within the forests so largely domesticated mammals are also involved in this particular biome so this biome also carries the largest number of human population now see the difference earlier in evergreen forest we did not have so much of human intervention here human intervention is too much that's why maximum forest dwelling happens in this particular biome now let's understand the last section of today's session that is about the human beings and monsoon deciduous forest biome what is their relationship about how is the adaptation all about so let's understand that this tropical or subtropical monsoon deciduous forest biome is world's most disturbed ecosystems of the world now why it is disturbed as we are talking about human beings and its impact let's see that there are numerous cases of forest fires every year this is a news every year so forest fire due to natural reason that is lighting and anthropogenic factors such as you know actions of human beings like burning cigarettes and herdsmen forest people they don't care about if it takes fire so that is one reason sometimes that people coming to those areas are having such actions that lead to forest fires eventually or adverent and international actions intentional actions not international actions but it is inter internationally acceptable that what happens because of clearing of forests agriculture is the main purpose population is growing so we have to produce more food so what happens there is an intrusion to such forest areas mass felling of trees jhum cultivation happening all around the globe in such areas and large scale grazing so that's why this is a disturbed ecosystem as we say and the forest of this monsoon deciduous forest biome have rapidly been destroyed in last 50 years at a great rate of destruction 
Large scale clearance through mass felling of trees is one of the most important aspect of this particular area because of the increasing agricultural land. Okay, so that's the important point to remember. The rapid rate of deforestation has led to initiation of several ecological and geological problems that we face. Okay, so what is happening? Several species of animals, okay, now have become endangered. If you see UN Red List, you'll find the number of endangered species and also species that have completely lost it. They are extinct now. So that is happening in this particular biome. For example, if you see lions and tigers and even elephants have become endangered species in India specifically you see because of deforestation and because of mass hunting of these animals. So what happens? Indian rhinos is another example that are facing extinction because of this mass killing. These are in the news every time when we see this forest biome is perishing in last 50 years. So. If you see in other examples, the lions of ghee forest of Gujarat in India are one of the examples and others are leopards, spotted deer, sambhar deer, Indian gazelle, nilgai, antelope, wild boar and these are now endangered because of the same reason the enormous destruction of this particular biome, this particular deciduous forest biome that we say ghee forest ecosystem. So what we see here is the rapid rate of deforestation in monsoon lands okay and that leads to acceleration of soil loss as well through rill and gully erosion siltation of riverbeds another example that is happening in this particular ecosystem and consequent recurrent severe floods because if, as we understand in monsoon season there is heavy downpour so what happens in alluvial river this is continuously overflowing so flooding is another important issue so this is all about what we studied today in terms of the monsoon biome that is the monsoon forest biome or tropical deciduous forest biome which is of largely a dry nature and only seasonal in comparison to the evergreen forest. So thanks for watching and subscribing to the Geoecologist. I hope you learned about this particular biome and we are going to continue with this biome series further as well. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep learning. Thank you so much.